Okay, I think we're going to get started here today. Um, thank you so much for joining us in this session uh, under the Tourism and Climate Change track. We'll be discussing interpretation today. Um, I think all of you were probably with us just now for Anna Pollock's uh, keynote presentation. Quite stunning, very honest, uh, which I think we, we all need, and needs really perfectly into our session here today together. Uh, we are uh, joined today by four um, wonderful experts in the field of climate change and interpretation. Uh, my name is Christina Cavalier with the International Ecotourism Society, and I'll be your moderator today. One of the reasons why I'm wearing this kind of uh, funny-looking Bluetooth piece is because this session is actually a webinar. Um, and one of the things that TIES is doing actively to try and serve our members in over 90 countries is open our sessions electronically to people that can't be with us um, for, for whatever reason. But it's also a way to uh, actually contribute to um, reducing our impact. Uh, so we have people that can benefit from the information today without uh, uh, increasing carbon emissions by flying to beautiful Vancouver. So please uh, keep in mind that our speakers will be heard by people in other countries. I don't know how many people we have joining us here, but we'll have a number for you at the end. Uh, and they can see the PowerPoint, and they can hear what we're all saying, but of course they can't see us in the room, so just keep that in mind. I'll be introducing each speaker individually when they come up, uh, just so our audience that's not with us, um, who's virtually joining us, can uh, put a voice to a need. So uh, if we can start uh, today, uh, I do welcome and am very, very thankful to have our experts on the panel here today. Um, we have Dr. Robert Fister, Mr. William Young, Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Roy Jensen, uh, and Dr. Bottrell, Chris Bottrell, with us today. Um, so we're, we're quite thankful to have them with us. Our first speaker this morning, or this afternoon rather, will be Dr. Robert Fister. Dr. Dr. Fister has held university appointment in both the USA and Canada. His teaching and research has focused on attitudes towards tourism, diffusion of innovations, tourism marketing, environmental stewardship and interpretation, and entrepreneurship. He has served on the Board of Directors for Destination Marketing in California and currently serves as the Board for Tourism Vancouver uh, Island on the board. His list of publications are extensive and available on his university website. So please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Fister. Good afternoon. I think I understand uh, how this works, but uh, bear with me as I learn through the process here. All right. The uh, title of this is a reflection of um, the experience of being in academia. Some of you uh, who hang your hat in the universities understand that that's a dynamic and changing environment, and certainly has been for me. I have a responsibility of sort of looking at new uh, young entrepreneurs that are coming to the undergraduate program trying to figure out uh, if they have some dreams that they would like to put into a business plan and then at some point in time uh, implement those. So the title of uh, sustainability or moving from sustainability, and I've added labels uh, to sustainability reporting, is an idea that uh, is born out of a very simple principle. Uh, that principle is uh, called uh, product market match. Uh, you have to sort of figure out what that market is and make sure that you match your product to it. So my uh, particular market, of course, uh, are predominantly what you would call uh, Generation Y. Do we have any Generation Y in the audience, the younger folks? There we go. Well, please let me know if I do injustice to your characterization, but I do have uh, a certain amount of uh, perceptions that have been developed from being in the classroom of what it takes to uh, reach that target market. Uh, the particular product I have is uh, trying to, in this particular case, explain sustainability in the context of business planning. So let me uh, take you uh, in that direction. Uh, of course, one of the things that uh, you'll definitely recognize that deals with that uh, Generation Y is they tend to do enjoy things like MySpace. Uh, they enjoy uh, types of advertising that uh, maybe Mac does when the guys uh, very informal. They tell the story about the multi-channel, multitasking capability so that if, if you get lost when you're driving, 
Um, if you get lost, generally speaking, or if I got lost, I would pull over, turn off the radio, get focused, read the map. The Generation Y folks just simply pull over and look at the map. Music, any other things going on, don't phase them because they're multitasking, dealing with that stuff simultaneously. I have to think about that when I'm trying to get messages across in the classroom. So there's always going to be the text messaging. There's going to be the plug-in to uh, all sorts of uh, Internet capabilities. They are a very green population. That is to say they're Earth-friendly, concerned about what's happening in the environment. So it isn't uh, a challenge to place that material in the context of a business planning uh, context. They're, uh, maybe their authorities, if I have to refer to it that way, would be things like Facebook or MySpace, any type of uh, re social networking capability. So it's an interesting phenomenon uh, when I've asked uh, one time for a presentation on uh, how they'd make a choice to pick a destination. And uh, they actually uh, didn't use any of the normal destination marketing material that I'm familiar with sitting on a destination marketing board. They came in and said, we po pulled this all off YouTube. We like what these people are saying. Sounds like what we like to do. And so this is the place we'll probably go to. And it didn't deal with any of the hard copy uh, materials that I would expect to show up in the course of it. So it made me think about uh, how do I put sustainability into the context of um, of a different world than I'm familiar with. The last slide here is sort of suggesting that uh, textbooks are not their favorite thing. Print material is kind of interesting, but it's a, a subsidiary to anything that's going to be on the internet and other sources. So there's good ideas in this particular book called uh, Sustainable Tourism for Dummies. You know, it's great for businesses to pick up ideas, but it isn't going to be something I'm going to be putting out as recommended reading, because in the many cases, Half my supplemental material is all on, on uh, what you would call a, uh, a learning system, either Blackboard or Moodle, and they would simply uh, pick up slides that have voice narrative to them and a whole set of websites that they can go to and so forth. So let me uh, couch my comments as saying, uh, understand the audience I, I'm working with in trying to make this case for sustainability reporting. The premise behind it is nothing too uh, different than you would expect. Uh, there's sort of three pillars that has to happen if you're going to be talking about sustainable uh, endeavors. They have to have uh, uh, certainly economic viability. That's essential to the business plan. But the other question then is what are these commitments you're making in social, cultural, and environmental in terms of principles and practices of sustainability? Uh, the uh, three lines at the bottom, anyone who has to guess what they're meant to represent? Triple bottom line, thank you very much. Yeah, so symbol, symbolism, I guess, works in some cases. The premise behind it is triple bottom line is a real common theme nowadays in trying to understand how businesses integrate uh, these key issues that are part of uh, sustainable activities. If you're in the event planning business, and I have to tell you that I teach from a point of view that you may be doing a business plan for a recreation enterprise, you may be doing it for event business, or you may be doing it for uh, tour planning and uh, tourism in, in the most broadest sense. Um, tourism businesses certainly are the more complex. So in the case of sustainability, uh, you do have a kind of a, a fundamental source of information if you haven't seen the Green Meeting uh, Industry Council, they set out a lot of standards about how you set up the whole meetings that have minimum impact uh, from a variety of uh, perspectives. And of course, carbon offsets could be a part of that as well. But the premise is they've, they've formed a group that says, if you want to run a Green Meeting, here are some guidelines and standards for that. Now, whether it's suitable for the type of business somebody's doing, a lot of the event planners are, are things around, uh, you know, annual events or things that uh, are organized uh, for uh, to create attractions to certainly in BC remote and, and uh, isolated locations. However, if you're in the other sector of the industry, you've already heard some of this 